Good afternoon, my friends, and welcome to my channel. My name is Severiano Paoli, and we're going to talk about the double bass. What we're going to talk about in this first video is something that many people have asked me, have asked me through the years, which is how I hold the bow, how I hold the German bow. Now, for who doesn't know it, the German bow is this sort of bass bow, indeed, which has an underhand grip in opposition to the French bow, which has an overhand grip, so that you hold um, like this. It is actually not very German, since the, the first appearance of this grip is in Italy, like in the, in the 17th century, if I'm not wrong. Anyway, let's not make any rivalry between our countries, and let's get into this matter. How do I hold the German bow? Many people, when approaching the German bow, especially students or beginners, people that um, start playing with it at a later age, experience um, problems, experience stiffness, especially in the wrist, pain uh, like in the hands, or anyway, not, uh, they're not much at ease with it, especially people coming from, from the French bow or from other instruments. Now, let's uh, uh, get into what they do. By the way, I'm not a native uh, uh, German player because I'm, I'm, I was born in Italy and then I've done the, the first cycle of my studies and I was trained as a, as a French bow player but actually I, I started to have like, a lot of pain, especially in my fingers, especially, like, especially here on the thumb and I, I just couldn't take it anymore and then I switched to the, to the German bow. In another vi video, we'll talk about this, about this aspect. Anyway, how do I hold this thing, this stick? Well, there is something to do before. What is really fundamental, this for any sort of bow, and also with that, is to be extremely relaxed. So, look at my arm. It's completely relaxed, completely passive. That's really important, because in the first place, that's the healthiest way to, to hold your body, to, and second, that's gonna give all, that's gonna transfer all the weight of your body, all the weight of your shoulders into the string, which means that you will have enough power with the minimum effort. So as you can, I'm uh, um, I'm, I'm standing very upright, uh, correctly. My back is in a correct uh, position, and. My, my, my shoulder is released, relaxed, and so is, my, so is my arm. As you see, I'm actually swinging my body and the arm is moving passively with it. So I'm not doing any voluntary movement with the, with the arm. That's really important. Then, let's keep in mind that we have uh, three different uh, muscular areas that are interested in, um, in this matter. One is here, the shoulders, the back. They're really strong muscles, they're really powerful and they can really give a lot of strength. Then we have this part, the arm. The arm is something in between, it's not as strong and as uh, big as the shoulder muscles, still gives a lot of force and has some more control. And then we have the wrist and the hand. These are short muscles, they have explosive power but not the, the, the strength is not even close to what you get from the back and the row is mostly of con a control in row. Now, so, how do I... this will be very important after when I show you how to make sound with the bow. How do I hold the bow? So, it is the bow, it is the frog that I'm holding like this. I just grab it in the first place. Grab it like very randomly, like, like I would get a club, or as you can think of a gun, like same way. So like this, very random. And then I there is one finger that is here really important for me, which is this, the pinky. Yeah, the tiniest and uh, smallest of the fingers, the weakest, is actually the most important here, because it's 
our um, it's our sustain point. So I'm gonna put the pinky from this random grip here at the end of the frog. The frog is this piece of wood here. At the end of the frog, where now this boat doesn't have a ferrule, but that's where, for example, a ferrule, the, where the silver would be on uh, on a bow with it. Anyway, at the end of the frog, before the uh, plane here begins, as you can see, like this. Once I have the pinky, as you can see, the 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 the, the grip actually is beginning to uh, to get a shape. There is another finger at this point that I have to to fix which is the thumb. The thumb gets here, that depends on the length of your own thumb, anyway in contact position with the, with the pinky. And the, the thumb and the pinky, with the thumb and the pinky only, I can actually already hold the bow, not make it fall, and I can already use it. I'm going to show you. As you can see, I can already play, not in the most comfortable way, of course, but I can play. I'm actually using very, very little muscular power from the, from the fingers, so there must be no tension here. So when you practice, try to find the most relaxed way to hold these two fingers. They must be firm, but not stiff. At this point, there's another finger that comes on the scene which is the index. With these two thumb points, it gets on the stick. Some people like it over, some people like it under. To me it goes like this, but you can experiment, also dependently on the length of your fingers. And then... index finger has a very important stabilizing function. So it's the finger that will actually drive somehow the bow. And then there are two fingers left. Well, here you have two options. You either cut them off, which I wouldn't recommend, or you can put them on the frog. I like to put the middle finger here on the on the frog, that also depends on which bow I'm using because I have various. Anyway, I will put it here. And the other one may lean here on the on the on the lower edge of the frog. Very important thing, do not put it inside because this will actually make your position stiffer, will uh, will make a tension that uh, that you don't need. At this point our uh, German grip is complete. Here the, the stick leans here very relaxedly my my hand. We're going to see it can lean on various points, we're going to look into it later. But anyway, this is already a correct, nice, relaxed German grip, which is really easy to achieve. So once again I'm using the, um, the upper part of my voice, I'm using the, the back and the shoulder to start the movement and to, uh, to transfer the, the weight and the force that the, that the bow needs in order to make the, the string move. And I am very, I'm extremely, I really, I, you will hear this word a lot, but it's really important, I'm very relaxed in the rest of my body. The wrist and the finger follow the movement, stabilize it and control it, but there is almost no physical effort from this part of my body. It's a complete relaxation. That's actually the beautiful part of the German bow. You can play and be extremely relaxed. A question that I'm often asked is um, which, which specific hold I use. 
For the German bow, there's plenty of possible holes that come from different schools or different players and often are based anyway on the own anatomy of the contrabassist. What I'm going to show you now is which holes I use myself and, um, and be where they come from and you can maybe take inspiration from them. So, very first hole that I use, which is my basic hold, you will see me with that most of the time, is this. This hold is a, um, a variation of um, what people call the uh, Seaman hold. Seaman has been one of the milestones in the didactic of, um, of double bass. And um, we have some uh, sources about it, we have some pictures, some, uh, if I'm not wrong, we have some sketches anyway that show how he held the bow. And this is my interpretation. Once again, like everything, um, this is personal, this is how it adapts to my hand. I have a pretty average hand, but still you have to find your own solution. Anyway, how does it work? So, the stick leans on my leans here on my hand between the index knuckle and the thumb so it gets here it's not so much inside but it so it's some somewhere here in the middle as you can see the pinky goes in the usual place and the rest of the hands follows so as you can see this is um, this is how it comes it's a very natural hold and it just follows my, my hand, the, the shape of my hand and I'm going to show you now how it works, how it sounds The second hold that I happen to use is uh, um, my interpretation, let's say, of the um, Venice hold, of the Streicher hold, let's say, what, uh, which, which has uh, been brought to fame by Ludwig Streicher, who has been with the legendary double bass player of the 20th century, with a wrote that very beautiful method, I suggest you to look into it. Anyway, how does it work? The stick gets here, leans here, right next to my uh, thumb finger and the pinky, the usual place the, um, the index finger goes on top of the stick so, and uh, uh, the thumb leans on the index and the rest of the fingers get on the frog what is lovely from this, um, on this hole is that it's really really flexible here and you can have a lot of nuances which I'm going to show you now the third hold that I, that I use is uh, uh, what people call the um, Finneisen uh, hold this is what I've learned from my teacher um, Wolfgang Gütler who has been using this all his life. So, the particularity of this hold is that the bow gets here, between the, uh, the first index knuckle and, uh, and the finger itself. So, gets here, and pinky here, and the thumb goes so on top. So, it will be on top of the stick with the tip like this and the rest like that what is um, remarkable of this old is that you get extreme clarity in articulation the sound gets um, kind of brighter so it's actually really nice for soloing and to play some uh, specific dynamic like, I really like the pianissimo you can achieve from this and it gives you a lot of uh, clarity that you now let's go to an example
One of the typical issues that beginners with um, German bow may experience is uh, stiffness in the wrist. This um, can then transmit to the fingers and lead to pain, which is obviously something not desirable. Um, what I've found uh, from experience as a teacher and as a player myself, I mean, most of the things I'm saying I've experienced them on my own body, is that this comes from an incorrect um, use of the low muscles, which I was mentioning before, and from the wrong conception that the movement begins from the wrist. This can come actually out from a, a wrong interpretation of experience. I mean, when you see uh, people play with the German ball, you will often see a lot of wrist movement. But the wrist movement is nothing more than a consequence of freedom of relaxation. So, if the wrist is relaxed and the movement comes from the shoulder, the wrist is gonna react to the. Um, it's gonna react to what comes from here. So it's obviously it, it's obviously going to move. If it's stiff, it's just gonna stay like this. And of course, you don't want to play like uh, you're using a saw. So. What happens is that the wrist actually accompanies the movement that comes from above, but is not actively involved. You see, my wrist is extremely relaxed, and although it might seem that I'm using it, that I'm moving it, I'm doing nothing, it's just a passive movement. That's something really important, and really important to practice. What the wrist does, and that's really important, is what I call the anticipation, which is something really, really important when doing a bow change. So, take a look. I will play now a long bow. Once I'm at the tip and I want to go back, I have to do, of course, the opposite movement. But what if I want to connect these movements? If I don't do anything, I'm gonna get something like this. This is even exaggerated but anyway it's the change of bow is gonna be really hearable really evident in order to um, avoid this uh, to pre to prevent this you have to do something that they call anticipation which is so I'm going towards the tip look at my wrist a moment before I change so the bow is still going this way I, go, I already changed my, the position of my wrist, as you can see, from this, that is the down bow position, to the up bow position. So the moment that I change the bowing, and the bowing begins actually to go up, I already have the, the hand in the right position, and in this way I anticipate the motion and I make the change almost unhearable. This applies also, of course, to the, to the change from up bow to down bow. So look. Once again, here I change. And there you go. So if I play the full motion for you, this is what's going to happen. As you can see, I don't make any accent on the change of uh, on the change of bowing, and this makes my playing very smooth, and that's desirable. Um, the, according to the hold and to the individual technique, you can play a bit with the plan of the bow on the string. As a general thing, a good way to think of it is to have kind of a eight of, a, of an infinite symbol. Let's say this is kind of what the motion should be, what the motion of the bow on the string should be. So you get a very fluid, a very fluid motion. So, this was it for today. Thank you for watching and uh, don't forget to hit the like button if you like the video and if you have any question or um, any comment, please add it in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more music and uh, more tutorials. Um, so, thank you so much, have a great day, ciao!